Welcome viewers, our guest today is Mr. Dean Zimmer, a director at BC's Oil and Gas Commission in the Peace Region. Welcome Dean to the program. Great, thanks for having me, Faisal. Welcome. So please tell us about your role at the Commission and how long you have been there. Yeah, so I've been with the Oil and Gas Commission just over 10 years. I've worked in a variety of program areas uh, from applications and operations, compliance and enforcement to emergency response. My current role as director of the Monitoring Liaison Program is a role designed to run a program it is essentially a provincial cross-agency initiative uh, designed to provide opportunities to Aboriginal communities to work, uh, learn, share their traditional knowledge with government regulators or regulatory bodies in order to uh, improve information, communications and uh, transparency around uh, how government uh, regulates um, natural resource sector activities within their territories. Great, thank you. And when was the Commission created and what's its purpose? Yeah, so the Oil and Gas Commission was created in 1998. It operates under the Oil and Gas Activities Act. Uh, the Oil and Gas Activities Act was modernized in 2010. And the purpose of the Oil and Gas Commission is to oversee and regulate oil and gas activities that are, are provincial. Um, and that includes exploration, development, um, activities such as pipeline transportation and reclamation. The mission statement of the organization is quite clear in that we regulate activities for the benefit of British Columbians ensuring public protection and safety, uh, respecting those affected by oil and gas activity, conserving the environment, and supporting resource development. So why is the Commission considered to be a one-window regulator for the oil and gas sector? So the Commission is the single-window regulatory authority for oil and gas activities in the province. Uh, we have an enormous amount of expertise within our organization in the form of uh, engineers, hydrologists, uh, environmental specialists, and I think it's important to know that we're local. So we live and work within the communities where oil and gas activities take place. Now companies seeking to explore, develop, uh, produce, and eventually market oil and gas within the province must make application to the commission. We then review, assess, and make decisions on those applications, taking into consideration any landowner concerns, uh, First Nations interests, and or the needs of industry. Being the uh, single window authority, uh, essentially makes the Commission a one-stop shop for all oil and gas and associated regulatory activity and it assists by providing um, a consistent uh, application decision compliance and regulatory framework. Stakeholders know who they're working with and by being a one-stop shop or single window authority the Commission provides an all-encompassing one all-encompassing review process of oil and gas for the province. Great, thank you. And how important is the oil and gas industry, in your opinion, to BC's economy? So BC is the second largest producer of natural gas in Canada. We produce approximately 30% of natural gas for the country, as compared to 1% of the country's oil. And BC is very fortunate that we have large deposits of shale and natural gas in the Northeast. Uh, despite low North American prices, uh, BC's export to both domestic and U.S. markets of our natural gas rose to 44 billion cubic meters in 2014-2015 as compared to uh, 39 billion cubic meters in 2013-2014. I think it's really important to note too that uh, people in the Northeast truly really understand the importance that the industry brings both in terms of employment opportunities and economic benefits. The Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, or CAP, estimates that the industry generates 20,000 jobs for the province and $1.5 billion to provincial revenues. And that revenue um, is used for the, by the province to support programs such as health care, education, and infrastructure. And what are the challenges faced by the oil and gas sector at the moment, and any signs of recovery? Yeah, so while this is, isn't my area of expertise, as a, as a regulator, we're constantly monitoring what is happening locally, nationally, and globally. I don't think it's any surprise to say that the new U.S. administration is somewhat of an unknown factor when it comes to uh, North American and global oil and gas market conditions. The Western Canadian markets uh, are also changing. Uh, we've seen a 17% drop over the past five years in our exports to the United States, and this is largely a result of the United States bringing more of its own resources online. Yeah, so oil, oil prices remain low and transportation costs associated with uh, moving gas from Northeast BC to the United States are high due to the distance and infrastructure required to do that, so that is a challenge. So another challenge is that uh, if uh, oil prices continue to remain low, Canada will likely see a, 
a continued decline in its export volumes and BC a uh, similar decline in its production volumes. On the bright side though, um, BC has seen some growth in its natural gas production due to the development of our unconventional gas reservoirs, in most notably in the Montney Shales located near Dawson Creek and Port St. John. Thank you. And what's the NRS Aboriginal Liaison Program? So through the Natural Resource Sector Aboriginal Liaison Program, agencies partner with Aboriginal groups to tailor monitoring and liaison projects to meet a community's concerns, interests and technical capacity. And, and we do this uh, I think as I mentioned before, to improve information, communication and transparency around uh, how government regulates the industry in traditional territories of the Aboriginal groups participating in the program. And please tell us briefly about the history of the Aboriginal Liaison Program, how it originated and grew over time. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the program originated between the Doig River First Nation and the BC Oil and Gas Commission. And it was in response to concerns that the Doig River First Nation had with uh, oil and gas activities that were occurring within their territory. In 2014, uh, we signed an agreement with the Doig River First Nation to help enhance their understanding and knowledge of how the Oil and Gas Commission regulates the oil and gas industry. Um, as, a, as part of that, uh, the intent was also to, to strengthen the working relationship between the Oil and Gas Commission and the Doig River First Nation. The result of the program has seen a, a reduction in concerns. The program provides a resource, for, a knowledgeable and trained resource for the community that they can turn to to utilize when they have questions and concerns related to the industry that that individual then can bring forward to the appropriate government agency to have addressed and answered. Excellent. And what's the role of the liaison? So the, the, the role of the liaison is to act as a communication bridge between the commission and the community. Uh, it is intended that they work closely with chief and council, uh, community members, elders, uh, lands office personnel in order to bring forward any questions, concerns or interests that they may have again to the appropriate government regulatory body to have um, addressed and answered. Government supports this role by providing opportunities to um, educate and provide that person experience through joint field inspections, uh, ride-alongs, and mentoring and training opportunities. And how many First Nations are the members of the program currently? How many are involved? And does the program have the capacity to grow over time? Yes, yeah, so we have, we have seven nations involved in the program which represent 17 communities employing 10 liaisons. Uh, the communities involved are the Doig River First Nation, uh, the Soto First Nations, Prophet River First Nation, Heisla Nation, Lake Babine Nation which represents five communities, Carrier Sakani First Nations, which represents seven communities, and the Niskaliism's government. And the program may ex be expanded over time depending on uh, resources and funding and the success of our current pilot projects. Thank you. And what has been the reaction to the program from the community, from the government, from the First Nations? Reaction to the program has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, many Aboriginal groups across the province have expressed an interest to have similar programs development implemented within their communities and government has been fully supportive um, from the operational level where we have people in the field working with the communities to the executive level you know seeking to find that long-term funding and governance structure to make the program successful. Industry has been very supportive of the program and has provided many opportunities for the liaisons to to work and collaborate with their staff in the field. Excellent and besides the Commission have other provincial corporations, institutions, organizations, bodies, they've also become a little more involved? Yes, so we have, uh, again, with, with the concept expanding beyond the Commission to include other agencies in the natural resource sector, uh, we've had received tremendous support from agencies such as the Environmental Assessment Office. So liaisons are out actively working with environmental assessment officers on large mining projects, uh, power transmission lines, um, notably here in the Northeast, the EAO or Environmental Assessment Office has had liaisons out working with their staff or doing inspections with their staff on Site C. Other agencies include the Conservation Officer Service, so liaisons have been out with conservation officers uh, participating in game checks and vehicle checks. Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations is another significant player. Um, again, liaisons are out with uh, natural resource officers participating in harvesting inspections, land act authorizations inspections, uh, wildlife monitoring in a form of doing uh, counts on grizzly bear and bison. And at the provincial level, we have uh, full support from the Ministry of Aboriginal 
Relations and Reconciliation, uh, the Ministry of Energy and Mines, and federal participation in the form of the National Energy Board. Thank you. And where do you see the Aboriginal Liaison Program going in future? I think a shared vision of the program is growing within the natural resource sector. And if we can properly fund and administer the program, it can become, um, it can become a mechanism for willing Aboriginal groups to be able to participate in compliance and environmental values monitoring on an ongoing and consistent basis. Great, thank you. And lastly, Dean, about the Commission's Dawson Creek Resource Centre, is it open to the public? Yes, it is. Our Dawson Creek office has our, our houses our resource centre, um, and it is open to the public, uh, industry or stakeholders or anyone for that matter, to come in and they can learn more about the history of oil and gas in the Northeast, uh, new technological innovations, um, and our regulatory requirements. And for more information on that, I encourage everyone to visit our website at bcogc.ca. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for the services and thank you for all the information. We wish you all the best. Thank you for your time, too. Thank you. Welcome.